Welcome back. We're in the book of Exodus, and we're moving over today in, in, into chapter 14, verses 1 to 4. And this is going to be the Red Sea crossing this chapter, so we're getting up to some pretty interesting spots here. Uh, let's carry right on. Let's look at these four verses. Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Tell the sons of Israel to turn back and camp before Pihahiroth, between Migdol and the sea, and you shall camp in front of Baal Zephon and opposite it by the sea. For Pharaoh will say to the sons of Israel, they are wandering aimlessly in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. Thus I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will chase after them, and I will be honored through Pharaoh and all his army, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. And they did so. So when it says, and they did so, what we're being told here is that uh, when God told them, go this way and camp in this location, uh, that's what they did. They turned around, they went in into that very space, and that's where they camped. Now, it's pretty clear from the picture here that's described, we, we're not absolutely certain where this location was. And yet, it's pretty clear from the picture that this would, was a militarily disadvantageous place to be. They, it would be hemmed in. There's no big, easy escape because God kind of has the timing of everything down, and he can see that Pharaoh's marshalling his, his chariots and Pharaoh's on the way, and Pharaoh's going to come and chase them down now. And so uh, God knows all about this, and he has them camp in this place, which, which is apparently to them, it's like going to be hopeless, like we're going to be slaughtered here. And yet, they follow the command, they camp there, and there they are camped at this disadvantageous location, trapped up against the large body of water there they need to cross. And, and we're going to see here, as of tomorrow morning, here comes Pharaoh's army. Now, there's no limitation that I've ever seen yet to the human ability to rationalize and to justify. We can take a lot of things and use them and misuse them to create reasons that make us feel like it's right to do this, it's right to do that. And I'm looking at verse three here and wondering what was in the mind of Pharaoh. And we don't really know, and yet look at what it says. Pharaoh will say of the sons of Israel, they are wandering aimlessly in the land, the wilderness has shut them in. So basically they're stuck and they're wandering aimlessly in the land. Where are they going? You know, they're not like, where, there's nothing down there for them to go to because God is leading them in an indirect path. And so why would they be going there? And perhaps in the mind of Pharaoh, we don't know this, perhaps in the mind of Pharaoh, he's saying, well, then they are saying, we, what are we gonna do? You know, the economic foundation of Egypt is, is in trouble now because you've let all this free labor is gone. So we need to go back and bring them back in. And now that they've worked this business out and now they're gonna be ripe for the picking because you know, here they are wandering in the desert. What are they gonna do out there? You know, there's no Taco Bell out there, right? What are they going to eat? Of course, Pharaoh doesn't know anything about the manna that's coming up. But I'll bet you that in Pharaoh's mind, he's saying, you know, and maybe it would come out into his thought thoughts, we need to be merciful to these poor people. They followed a bad leader and they're misled about their whole situation. And now they're going to basically, unless I intervene, unless I go and bring them back, they're gonna starve out there in the desert. They're gonna just scatter and it'll all become to nothing. We'll lose our labor force and they're gonna die. So I'm gonna do them a favor. I'm gonna go and bring them back and we'll feed them and we'll get some bricks made, some more bricks made again very soon here now. Maybe, it, the text doesn't tell us this, but he says they're wandering aimlessly in the desert. He can't figure out what they're doing out there. And as we go along, we're gonna see that they can't figure out too much what they're doing out there. So always we have this pretendency to, to forget the purpose, forget where we're going to begin to, to lose track and lose sight of the main goal. Moses isn't going to lose sight of it. God certainly isn't going to lose sight of it. And now Pharaoh is kind of stuck in his thinking. He wants to bring them back. And I'm sure his advisors are saying, bring them back because economically, how are we gonna, you know, we need this. So I think there's just a warning in here for us, you know, be real careful about what you rationalize. Be real careful about the reasons you make up for what you're doing. Pharaoh is going, you know, Pharaoh could live. He could keep his army in chariots because we're, we're going to see how this ends, you know. But instead, he's going after him. He's going to lose absolutely everything there. And uh, perhaps he's going to save the poor, misguided Hebrews from their wilderness time. In his mind. In his mind. May God lead us and give us clear thinking and a Bible-based direction for our lives. God bless you.